get started. Today, we're going to be reading from Black Jack, my book about boxing. And this is actually not going to be a reading because this is a book that I actually perform when I speak in schools because it's a, such a unique story uh, of Jack Johnson, which is the focus of the book. And uh, since it's such a unique story, I speak to a variety of different grades about it, <clears throat> excuse me, grades K through 12 about this book, actually, because since it is such a unique story, people really enjoy it. So let me, I see the chat is right there. Uh, I'm going to give about a minute or two. You know, I, I started a little late, had some technical difficulties, but those are pretty much done. So let's just get that lined up. There we go. So that is Blackjack. Illustrations by Shane Evans with words done by me. This book came out a few years ago. It is published by Macmillan Books, um, Neil Porter Books under Macmillan Books. Um, it's good to see you. I got Wyatt and Keika here. Keika is back once again. Good to see you again. Um, so I am going to get started on Jack because, like I said, I started a little late, so I'm going to get started. So I'm not going to be reading from it, but I am going to show the pictures as I go along. <laughs> Black Jack was born Arthur John Johnson in 1878, March 31, in the state of Texas, in the city of Galveston. Born to Henry and Tiny, both former slaves, Lil Arthur, as he was called, wasn't always so brave. Bullies beat up on young Jack until he was black and blue. His eyes were wet from crying. He didn't know what to do. His older sisters fought for him. His mother's face was red until she wagged her finger at him one day and said, Jack, fight back. And fight Jack did, beating all bullies with two quick fists thrown strong and surely. Fighting, it seems, came easy to Jack and built up the confidence he once sorely lacked. Just five years of school did young Jack attend, but he loved to read stories about great men. Napoleon, the leader bike racer, Major Taylor, and jockey Isaac Murphy all inspired Jack's behavior, inspired Jack to dream of a life so grand, inspired Jack to dream of becoming a great man. Now, at this point in the story, Jack is about 18 years old, and he's looking for work. He's having a hard time finding a job because he only made it to fifth grade in school. Now, that was actually pretty common back then because parents at the time felt it was more important for their kids to go to work than to go to school. So think about that. If you're in fifth grade, would you be ready to go out into the work world? Probably not. But that was a pretty common thing back then. Remember, this is the late 1800s, early 1900s. And Jack was very similar to many other kids his age. So then the book goes on and it talks about a, a lot of the different varieties of jobs that he had. And by the time he reaches 18, he realizes that even though he can't find a job, what he's really good at is using his fist in the ring. So that's what he focuses on. And the more he fights, the better he gets. Not many fists touch Jack's chin, but his touch plenty, earning many a win. Fast hands, a clever head, and reflexes like a cat, and a big right uppercut sent many to the mat. With each fight fought came new improved skills, and with each win came a fist full of bills. With money in his pockets, Jack showcased his style. Sharp suits, handsome hats, and a bright golden smile. A sharp-dressed sport with an even sharper mind. Jack sometimes played bass to relax and unwind. He even invented the wrench later on down the line. A lover of cars, Jack could often be found, flaunting his style while tooling around town. By the wheel of his car, Jack was just Jack. But everywhere else, Jack was just black. Now, Jack was a mighty man, and Jack was a fighting man, and Jack was a mighty fighting man. But what Jack wanted most was to be a great man. So he challenged the times, but it was Jack who was challenged when he faced the color line. Now, the color line wasn't an actual line. It wasn't something you can see or touch. It was an agreement between all white athletes at that time that they wouldn't compete with or against any black athletes. Now, it sound, sounds really silly right now because sports is one of the few places uh, where you see people of all colors um, working together and against each other in sport. 
But back then, there was only three pro sports and not the three that you would think. There was horse racing, baseball, and boxing. In boxing, the heavyweight champ was a white fighter by the name of Jim Jeffries. Since Jim Jeffries was the champ, Jack wanted to fight him so he could be the champ. But Jim Jeffries did not want any parts of fighting Black Jack. So every time Jack, every time Jim Jeffries had a fight, Jack would be in the audience. And when Jim Jeffries' hand was raised in victory in the ring, Jack would be in the audience and he would stand up and challenge him and say, Jim Jeffries, why won't you fight me for the heavyweight championship of the world? And Jim Jeffries always had the same reply. I will never fight a black fighter. Now, it didn't matter where Jim Jeffries fought because Jack had earned some money himself. So anywhere that he fought, Jack was always there. When he fought in New York City, Jack was there. When he fought in London, Jack was there. Paris, Jack was there. Rome, Jack was there. Australia, Jack was there. Always the same question, always the same response. I will never fight a black fighter. So after a while, after doing this for over a year and a half, Jim Jeffrey started knocking out guys in about 10 seconds, really fast. Not because he was that good, but because his opponents were that bad. And the fans got tired of seeing this. They got tired of paying all of their good hard-earned money to watch the champion fight these guys that couldn't even last 10 seconds. So they called him out on it. And they said, you know what, Jim? We're not buying this color line thing anymore. We think you're just too scared to fight Jack. So they called him out on it. And after hearing this for two years, Jim Jeffries threw his hands up and said, fine, you want me to fight Jack? I'll fight the great black Jack. And they found, so they finally agreed to fight on the 4th of July, 1910 in Reno, Nevada, in a fight they called the Battle of the Century. The 45 round bout only lasted 15 when Jack made history with this breathtaking swing. Uppercuts to the chin, laid Jim on the ropes and smashed the color line, raising black people's hopes. A golden smile flashed as bright as the sun in the ring on the face of Jack Johnson, the world's first black heavyweight champion. The it. Super short, super sweet, <laughs> short and simple to the point. Uh, I love performing that book when I speak in schools because as you can see, it's pretty short. And since it's a, a very unique story, I can speak about it to grades K through 12. I've had seniors in high school just as excited as second graders. So I hope you enjoyed the book. Um, if you want to purchase the book, I do have it available. Look in the description below and you'll find a link on how to buy it. You'll buy it directly from me and I will even sign it to you. So with that, thanks for stopping in to uh, check out the reading of Black Jack and I hope to see you soon. So the next reading that I will have will be next Monday and Tuesday, April 20th and 21st. That's where my calendar is, April 20th and 21st. And I will be doing my two basketball books, Hoop Kings and Hoop Queens. So I hope to see you there for that. Otherwise, take care.